Okay, we got a good animal cameo in here. Come here. Oh, Toby. Hi. Toby, who's that? Oh, who's that? Shake? Yes. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jessica and today we are doing a Pandos Eyeshadows updates, which are always so much fun. Pandos Eyeshadows was created by Alexi here on YouTube, who is always linked in the description box down below. And I do want to give a quick disclaimer to everybody before this video gets started that I may have a problem with my footage. I definitely have a problem with my external hard drive. My external hard drive just stopped working. I actually had like a little accident with it. It kind of fell while it was plugged in. Long story short, I have lost all of my clips of all of my progress photos from all of my projects from Panda's Eyeshadows, Decca Panning, Project Pan. It is a little bit of a devastation over here, but I am going to get through it. I know that it'll be just fine. I'm going to try and go through my old videos and screen record or screen grab any progress that I can. I think I should be able to do that just fine. I'm not a techie person, not in the least, but I think I'll find a way to move around this. That's kind of how I navigate through the world of technology. I find all these weird ways of doing things and making it work, problem solve, it's probably not the most effective or the most efficient, but I get the job done in the end and I guess that's what's important, right? So let's go ahead and get into this video. I have a lot of fun updates for you all the same, regardless of all of this data drama. So let's get right on into the video. But before we do, please give this video a quick thumbs up and just get it out of the way before you forget about it. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you in my little YouTube community here. Let's get right on into the video. Starting with the shade that's been in the project the longest, I have this matte yellow here. The shade is called To The Core and it is from my Pineapple Cake Quad from ColourPop, the Hello Kitty collection. This is what To The Core was looking like when I first brought it in. It had that adorable pineapple embossing on it. I reached for it six times in the first month. Here's what it was looking like. I then reached for it five additional times, making for 11 uses total and it was looking like this. I amped up my use quite a bit, used it 12 times. In the following month, 23 uses total, and it was looking like this. It had a nice dip going in it. I kept it in for a fourth month, got two more uses on it, and here's what it's looking like today. And as you can see, I do have a pan on this one today after 25 uses, and I was quite happy when it showed up. So that one got rolled out quite early in the month, and I was happy that I hit that goal early in the month so that I could spread my attention on other eyeshadows. You know, I'm panning so many eyeshadows right now that it was nice to just get this one out of the way and decrease the amount I'm focusing on for that month. So that is the first shade that I get to roll out this month. That is very exciting, and I'm happy to have one new pan in my collection. The next shade is this matte blue here, very vibrant, bright blue. It's called Fine China, and it's another ColourPop shade. This is from the She's a Rainbow palette, and I've been working on this shadow for now three months. So here's what it was looking like when I had first rolled it in. Brand new, hardly touched at all. I used it five times during the first month, and it was looking like this. I reached for it six additional times in the second month, making 11 uses total. Here's what it was looking like then. And in this past month, I reached for it six additional times, 17 uses total, and here's what Fine China is looking like today. And this might be the smallest pan that I have ever had to show to you, but it's there. See it? See how tiny and small it is? But I hit that pan and I may or may not have dug into that one to hit pan on it because I was just fed up with the shade. I just didn't want to work on a bright blue any longer and so I created a few blue wings with this shadow as well as a lot of bold blue looks and I had fun with it but I was definitely burnt out on blue by the end of it. So I was so happy I finally hit pan on this one. I think it was just yesterday that I hit pan on it. So thank goodness we got there and I'm now rolling this one out. 17 uses, those detail brushes help me get there pretty fast. I wasn't going to get there otherwise. I would have had to use this well over 30 times to hit pan on it. So sometimes you just got to get there any way you can. So that one is rolling out and I'm hoping that I get a little bit of break from blue because as you all know, there's been a lot of blue in this collection this year. And every time I think I'm getting a break from it, it comes back. So we'll see what happens. Okay. This next shadow is a little bit of a story. This is from the collection that came out of all those quads, and I've been working on two different shades in here. The first one I hit pan on last month, and then the matte shade I've been working on for two months. It's the shade Extra Syrup. So here's what Extra Syrup was looking like when I had first brought it in. I used it 12 times during the first month, and it was looking like this. And during the past month, I reached for it three additional times, making for 15 uses. And, um, Here's what it's looking like today. Look at this. 
you know, we've had a lot of talk about this palette and how it's just not good quality as far as packaging goes, but I'm starting to think these shadows are not good quality either. <laughs> they are literally crumbling apart and I have not been treating this any different than any of the other makeup in my collection. It's been getting the exact same treatment, if not more gentle treatment because I know how just delicate and fragile it is. So I've been treating this with kid gloves, but to no avail, look at it. It's a big broken shattered mess and this is definitely going in the garbage. I'm not gonna continue to work on it. I'm not gonna try and repress it. I've had it, I can't. I'm way too busy to try and get a value out of this $6 eye quad I bought on sale on Impulse. So there you have it, out of the collection. No pan, but we tried our best. This next shadow comes from the Alamar Reina del Caribe palette, and it is my favorite shadow in the whole palette, El Malacón, a really pretty sagey green. Beautiful shimmer too. So here is El Malacón in the swatch, and here's what it was looking like when I first brought it into this project just last month. I only reached for it four times in the past month, but loved every time I did, and here's what it's looking like today after those four uses. And I think you might see a little bit of a dip going on in there, but we have a long way to go. These pans are very, very deep. I don't know if you can fully appreciate how deep they are in this shade over here in La Costa that has pan, but they deep. So this one is going to be a challenge, but I do love this shadow so much. It might just be a 30 user. We shall see, but that one is definitely staying in. Ultimately, my goal is always to hit pan, but my standards, if I'm not hitting pan, are that I have to use it at least 30 times and over three months of use. So both of those parameters have to be met. Because I love the shadow so much, I am going to really enjoy using this one up, even if it takes me a bit of time because it is such a bright and vibrant Shade. I mean, it's not super bright and vibrant. I could make it more wearable, but I just don't really want to wear greens all the time. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to enjoy it and take my time with it. And the last shadow I have to update you on is from my Mercury Retrograde palette from Huda Beauty. I just brought this in last month. I've been working on the shade Karma. Here's Karma. It's a really pretty like dusty pink shade, really easy to wear, quite neutral, natural, great for the crease been really easy to reach for. So here's what Karma was looking like when I had first rolled it in, pretty much brand new. I reached for it seven times in the past month, which could have been better, but not too bad. And here's what it's looking like today after those seven uses. And as you can see, well, maybe you can't see, there is no dip to be seen here. I mean, you can see a slight disturbance in the surface, but that's it. The mattes in here are very firmly pressed, pretty pigmented, and I do not hope to reach pan on this shade in 30 uses, but it definitely will get the 30 uses and hopefully it'll have a nice satisfying dip by the time we do roll this shade out. But for now, it is staying in. So that means I have three eyeshadow shades rolling out. I have these two mattes on the bottom and then the other matte that I'm not even daring to swatch because of the big crumbly mess it is. And then we have these two shades staying in, which I think will be really fun and easy to reach for during the summer months that we have ahead of us. And we get to roll in three new shades. But before I do, I wanna share some eyeshadow looks that I created using these shades over the past month. Hi, baby. Sorry, I had to turn the light on. I tried to do this with natural light. It's behind a tree now. I try to explain this every time, but it doesn't get better. The sun keeps rising and setting in the same way every day. Can you believe it? So this first look I wanna share with you is a really pretty green yellow look using all three of these shades here. I have to the core all through the crease. I believe I'm using this one in the outer corner blended with the yellow, it gives that nice green look. And then I also have El Malacan all over the lid. And I think I also have another green on my lid as well. And El Malacan is kind of touched over that to add that extra dimension. So that one was pretty, kind of like lemon limey vibes. Here's a look I created using Fine China in the outer corner, creating a purple look. So I definitely used Fine China a lot to mix with pinks to just turn it into purple if I wasn't feeling blue that day. Hopefully I'm not feeling blue most days. But here is a blue look that I created using, again, Fine China to create a nice dramatic wing on that outer corner. And then I'm using some silver shade from I think my Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette all over the lid. Here's an example of a purple look that I created using Fine China again. And then I believe I also have extra syrup all throughout the crease in this look. 
extra syrup is a nice rosy mauve shade so it paired well with fine china when i was doing more of a purple look so that's probably in a few of those looks but i just can't really see because it's buffed out so much into the crease here's a really pretty blue look i created i love this look i incorporated fine china to really deepen out the outer part and create that dramatic smoky look and then i use shades from my odin's eye jewels and gem palette to get the effect on the eyelid i use i think some of their duochrome shades this look has karma in the crease so so you can see it's kind of that like more corally pink shade in my crease and I paired it with shades from my Panda palette all over the lid as well as a duochrome from the Odin's Eye palette. I'm trying to use that one for my deck of panning project so that's why you're going to hear me mention it a few times but I definitely have karma in the crease for that one. I love this look I created. It's a nice neutral look but then I had a little pop of green on my lower lash line where I used El Malacan to just get like a nice shimmery green effect under my lashes and I really like how it turned out. I think it's really subtle but really pretty and kind of helped the green in my eyes pop a little bit and just my eyes have that extra sparkle. And this last look is using Fine China to create that sharp blue wing and I paired this with again pinks to create like a pink and blue look. This was yesterday. I was just having fun with it and I was determined to hit pan on fine china so a wing it was and I created as bold of a wing as I could until I hit pan. <laughs> That's basically what happened. I just kept making my wing bigger and bigger and I'm very relieved that I finally was able to do that with this look and I kind of like how it turned out. It was pretty. So those are all my makeup looks that I have to share with you today and now I'm going to share with you my pan percentage which is my arbitrary goal that I've set for myself that means nothing at all. It's fun to track these numbers and see my progress in a numerical way. It just brings me a little bit of joy and excitement in my life so... You all understand, you're here on this channel. I don't need to explain this to you. So my pan percentage. So I'm trying to get my eyeshadow collection at 20% pan by the end of the year. So I have 466 shades of eyeshadow in my collection. And as of last month, I had pan on 84 of them. So my pan percentage last month was 18.03%. So I'm getting really close to my 20% goal. And we are continuing in that trend. During the past month, I was able to hit pan on four new eyeshadows. Not all of them are from my Pandas Eyeshadows project, but this is where I update my pan percentage no matter what project I hit that pan in. So I have a pan into the core. That, of course, is from this project. I also have a new pan from my Pan That palette and also for my Project Level Up palette. And then my fourth pan is this one in Fine China from my ColourPop She's a Rainbow palette in this project. I now have pan on 88 of my 466 eyeshadow shades, which brings my pan percentage up to 18.88%. So I am just over 1% away from my goal. I know I'm going to smash that goal this year, and I'm really excited to see how far I can go before this year is up. I am getting a little bit of panning fatigue right at mid-year. I feel like that's very common for us panners to feel. You just kind of trying to keep yourself motivated, keep pushing through. And I'm allowing myself some grace, allowing myself some breaks, just trying different things, having less items that I'm working on, having smaller goals for myself. But I'm really happy with the progress I've made, even if I'm feeling a little bit tired. It still makes me feel good at the end that I was able to use a lot of products that otherwise wouldn't have been reached for. And now for the best part of the video, I'm going to be bringing in three new eyeshadow shades using my Tiny Decisions app. I'm going to randomly generate an eyeshadow palette or a singles category or whatever it may be and then from there I will randomly generate a number to choose from that palette my shade. So I'm just gonna go rapid fire because I'm not sitting in my vanity right now. I'm going to get my three palettes and then I will choose my shades from there. Let's see what those palettes are. Here we go. The Child Palette. So much color pop. Well, I do love that. And it has greens in it, so that might work. I mean, I can't get a break from greens either. Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams. Ooh, that's a fun one. Okay. All right, I'll take that one. I haven't reached for that palette in a long time. And number three, the Too Faced Sweet Peach. Oof, another one of my favorites. And that one needs some love because she getting old. So I'm so excited, actually. I'm going to go ahead and grab those palettes, and then we'll pick some shades. Okay, so I have those palettes here. I'm gonna start with the child palette. So here's what my child palette is looking like today. I do have one pan in this palette already. This was from a pan those eyeshadows. I have a pan in Float Your Crib. And that means I have eight eligible shades that could possibly come into this project today. So I'm gonna put in the numbers one through eight in my 
little tiny decisions up here. I'm hoping I don't get one of these shimmery greens that would be in competition with El Malacan, but if I do, I'll just re-roll. Like specifically Right Hand Mando right here. Let me swatch that next to El Malacan. Here's El Malacan. Yeah, look how similar those are. So if I roll that one in, I'm not going to choose it. Also, just like a tattooing is something very similar to something in my pen, that palette. But I would love to work on the gold. The matte green would be great. Like I love this matte green there, that like kind of seafoam green, the highlight would be perfect. Let's just see what happens. I don't want to overthink this too much and jinx myself. So I have the numbers one through eight. It's really tiny, but it's right up there at the top. And let's see what we get. <laughs> Number eight, okay. <laughs> that is this dark brown, Droid Protocol. <laughs> I'm like kind of disappointed. Here's what Droid Protocol looks like in the swatch and you can see it's just your standard deep dark brown. And I'm gonna go with it because I like to use dark browns as a liner and it's much deeper than the brown that I'm panning in my Pan That palette. And I think that it'll kind of be easy for me to work on. And I kind of need some easy shades right now in where I'm at in my panning journey. So there you have it. I don't know if it's just the light. I don't know, I, I really made a heavy swatch, but it's like reflecting in the light for some reason. But it's a really deep, 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 deep brown. There you have it, that's the first shade, kind of boring. Uh, not the most exciting thing to work on in this palette, but I, again, could, do well with a little bit less excitement in my makeup routine, just for how I'm feeling, at least how I've been feeling this past week. Next palette, Pastel Dreams. I do have one pan in here already. I have a pan in Peach for the Stars. That is from my Pan Those Eyeshadows project, of course. And I also brought in Daydream into this project, but it was in like December where I only worked for it for one month and then started fresh in January. So it has a little bit of a dip going, but it is still eligible to come into this project and potentially get a pan on it. So there's 11 eligible shades in this palette. Let's see which one comes in. I would love maybe a purple or I don't know. No, please don't wear yellow. Five. I have the palette closed. I don't even know that's going to be. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that matte orange. That is going to be really easy and fun to work on. I don't know if I'll hit a pan on it, but it's a really pretty shade that I can incorporate into a lot of different things. I can make that work for a pink look, for a natural look, for a colorful look. It can just warm up the crease and enhance a very nude eyeshadow look, or it can really stand out in something bright and colorful. So I'm excited to reach for that. I'm kind of happy it's a matte. Also nervous, because I have a lot of mattes happening in my project right now. So we'll see what happens next. Swashing this, it feels a little bit chalky. I haven't played with this shade a lot. There is a little bit of a disturbance in it, so I guess I have. I just don't really remember. And there's the swatch. Look how pretty it is. It's almost fluorescent. It's almost neon. That's fun. That'll be exciting to play with. And next we have the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. Oh gosh, I love this palette. To this day, I think it's such a great color story, such a great formula, so versatile and easy, and it just is really one of my faves and it still smells good, so that's a bonus too. I don't have any pans in this palette. Too Faced is notoriously difficult to hit pan on, so every shade in here is eligible to come in. I do have a nice dip going in Candy Peach and Caramelized. I also have a very good dip in Peaches and Cream. I have a good dip in Nectar and Luscious. Oh, Summer Yum, this was in this project a long time ago, and I used it 30 times and didn't hit pan on it, so. That's where we're headed, I guess. But let's see what comes in. Hopefully it's something shimmery. That would be really nice. One through 18. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous. 13, it's not the luckiest number. Let's see, um, okay, six, 12, 13. All right, I lucked out. I landed on this shade here, peaches and cream, that I have the biggest dip on in the whole palette. So that was a little give me from the universe. I'll take it, I'll take it. And in the meantime, I will be happy just to have this palette out on my vanity. I know I will reach for other shades in this palette while it's around. This will also play really well with that pastel orange that I just brought in and it doesn't have a deep brown so I can deepen up looks with it. I mean it does have charmed I'm sure this is not my favorite brown so 
we don't have to use it. This will also pair really well with El Malacan and Karma. I can't wait to swatch this color story. Let me swatch it all out for you and show you what we're working with for the next month. So here is my color palette for the next month and I just can't believe how cohesive it is. This is one of the most cohesive color stories I've ever had. I could even see this coming together as its own quintet in some universe. I bet you'll see a palette like this out there eventually or there probably already is one that exists. So this will be really easy for me to reach for as a collection, hopefully make really good progress before the next update. I think I should be able to hit pan on peaches and cream before the next update, the divot on it is pretty significant. So that shouldn't be hard to do to reach for a cream color every day. Yeah, that is a softball. I'm grateful for that. And El Melicon's gonna have a way to go as well as Karma and these two as well. But hopefully I'll have at least one new pan for you by next update. That's all for my update today. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. It does mean so much to me. I really am enjoying making these videos for all of you and just being a part of this community. So just wanna say thank you again to everybody that takes the time to leave comments and just be a little part of my internet corner over here. I hope you're doing really well wherever you are in the world world and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Till then, bye!